let us begin then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess, we confess our sins, sins God, God is faithful, faithful and just, will forgive, forgive our sins, and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of the word, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We turn to page 85 for the introit for the day. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. In the city of our God, His holy mountain. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the artificial hero rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Glory be to the Father and to the Son. And to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning. Is now and will be forever. Amen. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. In the city of our God, his holy mountain. We return to page 159. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, <clears throat> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have, Lord mercy. have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We turn to page 85 for the collect of the day. Please let us pray this aloud together. Enlighten our minds, we pray, O God, by the Spirit who proceeds from you, that as your Son has promised, we may be led into all truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for the day is from the 34th Psalm, where we hear these words again. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. My soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. And then from Exodus, the 33rd chapter beginning at the 17th verse. The Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you and I know you by name. Then Jesus said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, 
There's a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in a cleft in the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. This is the word of the Lord. Then from Romans, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 9th verse, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth you confess and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who trusts in him will never be put to shame. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So far, the word of our Lord. And then, from Matthew, the 15th chapter, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus didn't answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, saying, send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost people of Israel. The woman came in and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Jesus answered, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. This is the gospel of the Lord. That is one of my favorite passages in Holy Scripture. She cries out, Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus doesn't say a word. How many times do you pray and it seems to you that God is just sitting there looking at you going on? Or ignoring you altogether? Has that ever happened? Sure. Well, let's put it the other way around. Is it very often that you pray and you see an answer immediately? Yes. Yes, okay. Well, that settles that. Very often he does answer immediately. And also very often he doesn't. He has a reason. He has a reason. And whatever reason that is, he's not accountable to us for it. As he said to Moses, I will have compassion on those who I want to. Keep them. What's in God's will is in God's will, and he doesn't have to answer to us because 
He's got it. He's not our employee. If anything, we're his. And apparently she said this more than once. Lord, Son of David, have mercy on me. Apparently she said it a lot of times. Many times. Because here come the disciples. Here come them up there on this long weekend at the beach in Tyre. Send her away. She keeps crying out. Guys that he took with her. She's a nuisance. Jesus, we came up here to catch some rays and enjoy the beach. And she's making such a fuss, we can't. Do something, Jesus. And his answer... If you're not careful listening to his answer, you can get deceived by what he says, although that's not his intention. We deceive ourselves by putting our interpretation on what he said. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Boom, right off the top, that means only Jews can be saved, right? that sound like what it says, right? The lost sheep of Israel. Only to Jews, only to Israelis. Pay attention. He said to the lost sheep of Israel. The lost sheep belonging to Israel. And the woman does not shut up. She is persistent. She kneels, Lord, help me. She doesn't go away in a huff saying, huh, well, that's the way you're going to be about it, Jesus. I'm just not going to believe in you anymore. If you're not going to pay attention to me right now, well, I'll just go somewhere else for help. She does not do that, does she? She does not get in the huff and go into some corner somewhere and says, okay, I'm just going to curl up and eat worms and die. She's not trying to force God to do anything. She's pleading and pleading over and over again, not in the huff, but pleading. Pleading knowing God has the answer to her problem. Knowing Somewhere in his will is the solution to what she needs. And so Jesus plays right along with this thing he has set up. He knows what he set up. It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Well, Pay attention carefully here. In the last hundred years or so, we've seen a lot of prejudice and hatred towards Jews. And that's wrong. It's dirt wrong. It's dirt wrong for any people to hate any other people. We have people putting a, a, a fence up between the United States and Mexico. Well, maybe there's a reason to control the border. But there's no reason for any of us who live here to hate Mexicans. And we shouldn't. Or Cubans, or Canadians, or anybody else from any other place. Twenty years ago in Europe, there was a war between Serbians and Croatians. Okay, the war's over. There's no reason for Croatians to hate Serbians and Serbians to hate Croatians. 
peace. My friend Maynard Bach made the statement the other day that we are all members of one indivisible human race. And I believe that's 100% scriptural. We are all part of the human race and it's not something you can divide up into little segments and say, you know, Jew and Gentile or Samaritan and Jew or Mexican and Anglo or Serbian or Croatian. Or, we're all part of one human race. And this is what the lady here answers to. Okay, okay, okay. Well, first of all, at this particular time, the Jews considered the Canaanites in Tyre to be dogs. They called them Canaanite dogs. An insult. Um, there was some reason to do it. Tyre was from where um, Jezebel came from. And her tenure in, as Queen of Israel was not a, a happy, pleasant thing. And their view of the people up north there was of being I idolatrous, immoral dogs. You know, that was their reasoning. So Jesus says it's not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And she doesn't react all insulted. How dare you call me a dog? No. This man standing in front of her, Jesus, is still her master, her Lord. The son of David. God incarnate. And you're not going to shake her off by insulting her. She just right over her shoulder. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And you see the declaration of faith that is in them. If I am a dog, you are still my master. No matter what people call me, <laughs> no matter what you call me, Lord, you're still my master and I still have faith in you. I still believe in you. And by the way, Lord, help me. Have mercy on me. My daughter needs help. Help me. Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Now, the fact of it is here, over in Judea, among the Jews, among the people of, who, where Jesus was born, there were very few people, percentage-wise, who would cling to him and call him master through thick and thin, no matter what he called him or how bad he tried to push him away, seemingly. There were very few people who would call him master and trust him and believe in him. So who are these lost sheep belonging to Israel? The Canaanite woman. the first Gentile to be brought into the fold, into the fold of Israel. And who gets to define what the true Israel is? Jesus, King of the Jews, our Master, calls us to Himself. And all that is required is faith and patience and trust that he will answer in his right time when he pleases and when it's good for you. So far, the word of our Lord. Let us turn now to the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 167. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius.
Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty Father, turn our hearts so that we depend on your Son Jesus through thick and thin, through everything. And turn our hearts also that we may see that we are part, each one of us, part of one indivisible human race. Help us to feel that with our hearts. Help us to feel that with our souls. Help our hearts to reach out to every other member of the one indivisible human race whom we encounter with love, with patience. Showing the face of your Son Jesus Christ himself. And Lord, we lift up to you the political leaders of our nation, also the political leaders of the United States, the political leaders of Texas, the political leaders of every country in the world. And we ask you to turn their hearts in such a way that freedom will break out everywhere, that trust and love will break out everywhere, In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We turn to page 170. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, right to give them thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks and praise, O Lord, especially on this day in which we commemorate the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the grave. Therefore, we come before you with angels and archangels, all the hosts of heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on us, children of men, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have produced. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts that he may establish in us a living faith and prepare for us through Jesus Christ. Prepare us joyfully to remember our Redeemer and receive him who comes to us in his body and blood. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take ye, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you. Take and eat the bread of body of Christ.
take and drink the true body of our Lord Jesus, given him to death for you. Take eat. This is my body which is shed for you. Take drink. This is the cup of the New Testament shed for you for the remission of sin. Take it the very body of Christ, given him to death for you. Take drink. This is the cup of the New Testament shed for you for the remission of sins. May this true body and true blood of our Lord Jesus bless you and preserve you in the true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that in your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.